Every, everybody in this nation struggles to stay awake part of the time. And it affects our lives. It affects how we, how we respond. The problem is that the people we depend on to help us, to protect us, and the soldiers and sailors and cops and firefighters are often doing this while they're terribly sleep deprived. And when they're doing it, they're driving emergency vehicles too tired to drive. They're making decisions that can't ever be undone. I'm Brian Vila. I'm a professor at Washington State University in the criminal justice and criminology department, where I spend most of my life now is as a principal investigator in the Sleep and Performance Research Center here at Wazoo. We're trying to understand how the limits of human performance affect what people do in high risk, uh, high consequence activities. The problems we're working on are going to enable us to have them work as much as is reasonably possible and safe for them to do and where they can perform at their best instead of just stretching them farther and farther and farther as we want them to do more and more and we pay to have them do it on overtime and we ignore the fact that oftentimes those long, oftentimes those long work hours lead to more crashes more bad decisions. In the, in the whole world, there are 20 some odd residential sleep laboratories where you can bring people who, who aren't suffering from some sleep disorder in and study the basic problems, the physiology, the neuroscience, all the, all the pieces of how uh, sleep disruption, sleep deprivation, long work hours affects performance. But we're the only place in the world that has a high fidelity simulation lab inside that research space. We went out and got a grant from the Navy to equip the simulation lab with the driving and shooting simulators and some of the laboratory measurement devices so I can measure someone's uh, brain activity or their heart rate while they're in the midst of these simulations without interfering with them or I can tell where they're looking when as they're driving down the road or dealing with a, 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 a force situation. And in my world, because I bring people into the, the simulation lab and I want it to be as close to their real threatening world in the case of war fighters and, and, and the police and other first responders, um, I can't just tape them to a bed and take blood draws while I scare them with little pictures. I, I have to do something that will sell to the operational community and make sense to the general public and also do a, do a, be a good rep representation of, of this challenge in, in the real world. Police, open up. Turn and look at me and put your hands where I can oh, see the police. And set that down, set it, it on the ground. Like, that's good. Like, all right, all right. Just, all right. keep your hands where I can see them. Jesus, put them where I can see them. After a couple of years of college, started working as a police officer in Los Angeles. I was a deputy sheriff and then later a sergeant with the LA County Sheriff's Department. I worked in South Central LA after I'd been on the Sheriff's Department nine years. Uh, I went to Micronesia and ran law enforcement and public safety. I'm not some pie in the sky guy who's been in academia my whole life. I spent the first half of my work life starting at 17 getting shot at for a living. and. Uh, fighting people for, for a living and dealing with the absolute horrors of real life. Um, this is the best way out of some of those problems and to make it so we can deal with them better.